It is day two of the 96th annual Nebraska State FFA convention, and Pinnacle Bank Arena is abuzz with excitement. Blue jackets all over the place. Uh, nearly 8,000 FFA members and guests are in attendance this year. There have been a lot of workshops, a lot of competitions, a lot of hard work going into this year's convention. Uh, well, you had the chance to catch up backstage with the keynote speaker of the opening general session of this year's convention. Let's head to that interview. We are here with the keynote speaker for the first general session here at the Nebraska State FFA Convention. I'm joined by Rob Jones. He's a Marine veteran and a Paralympic athlete. Rob, give us a glimpse of the story you're going to tell tonight at the convention. Yeah, well, my personal story is I was a combat engineer in the Marine Corps uh, for five and a half years. I deployed to Iraq and to Afghanistan. And uh, my specialty was I was supposed to find IEDs, improvised explosive devices, and unfortunately, wasn't very good at it, stepped on an IED and lost both my legs above the knee. And as you said, I went to the Paralympics. I ended up riding my bike across the country. I did this thing where I ran 31 marathons in 31 days in 31 consecutive cities, raising money for veteran charities. So that was my new way of being a leader in my life after my injury. And so today I'm gonna to be talking about leadership. I'm gonna be sharing leadership lessons and leadership skills with, with everybody here. And the main thing that I want them to walk away with from my keynote is that everybody in this room is a leader. Every problem in their life can be solved through leadership and they need to take extreme ownership of all the problems in their lives and get them solved. Absolutely. Well, a very inspiring message for sure. Thanks. What is the most rewarding part of getting to share your story with groups like Nebraska FFA? The most rewarding part is that I get to help other people. And that's what leadership, the leadership skills that we teach, that is what it is about. We are here on this earth to help other people, and there's nothing that feels better than being able to help another person and help, especially young kids. Absolutely. Well, folks, if they'd like to tune in and watch the entire keynote, they can sure do so on our live stream. But thank you so much for joining us, and sure. we'll look forward to your talk. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Once again, that was Rob Jones, who will be speaking here at the first general session in Nebraska at the bank. inspiring message for all of Nebraska FFA about the power behind leadership. Absolutely. Yesterday, the Cornhusker Hotel was busy hosting leadership development events as well as various workshops. We caught up with a few workshop attendees and students competing. We're here at the Cornhusker Hotel and I'm visiting with Taryn Arbuthnot of the SEM FFA chapter who just competed in natural resource speaking. Taryn, tell us about your speech and what you talked about today. Um, I did it over wild crop relatives and how I can use them to breed them with modern crops to improve disease resistance, crop yield, and fertility. Awesome. How did you decide upon that topic and what made you passionate about it? Um, my speech coach's friend was actually um, interested in it, but they didn't have any um, speakers that year. and so. She brought it to my, or her friend, my speech teacher, and was like, hey, like, do you have anyone doing speeches? Like, this is a really good idea. So I kind of looked into it. I was a little skeptical about it, but then I like, researched and got interested in it. So yeah. Awesome. What is the most interesting part of your speech that you'd like to share with people? Um, probably that's tied into my favorite Christmas movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's an exciting few days here in Lincoln at State FFA Convention. Are you competing in any other contests, or what are you looking forward to the rest of the week? Um, I competed in Parley this morning, but other than that, no. I'm just looking for all the sessions and stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you, Taryn, and thank best you. of luck. Once again, that's Taryn Arbuthnot of the SEM FFA chapter here in Lincoln at State Convention. One of the neat things about Nebraska FFA Convention is getting the chance to meet all sorts of different people. And each year we have the opportunity to bring in one of the national officers. And Carter Howell joins us now, Southern Region Vice President. Tell us a little bit about what the national officer does here at State Convention. So really excited to be here at Nebraska State Convention. It's my first state convention, actually. So uh, this week, uh, actually today, I've been helping out with some LDEs this morning and some LDEs this afternoon. I've been at the Embassy Suites and at the Cornhusker now. Um, had some lunch with the state officers. They're really excited for the session coming up this evening. And then I'll, I'll uh, find a chapter, a lucky chapter to sit with uh, this evening to watch the session and then get ready to do it all again tomorrow. 
All right. One of the cool things is, like I mentioned, meeting people from all different states, and you're from Florida. Yeah. What the heck does Florida agriculture <laughs> look like? Well, you know, some similarities uh, to Nebraska agriculture, uh, a big cow-calf state, so I know that Nebraska is a big cattle state. Uh, maybe feed a little bit more cattle here than we do, but uh, lots of cow-calf operations. But then, uh, really in my area, one of the, the things that we do is we grow a lot of strawberries, uh, fruits, vegetables. Um, so that's the big thing in my community is strawberries. So uh, I'm actually from Plant City, which is the winter strawberry capital of the world. We have a strawberry festival. So that's a little bit about Florida agriculture. So Carter, you had mentioned a couple minutes ago that you get to interact with all sorts of different students. What's your your word of advice to them about being in this organization? I think uh, my, my word of advice is uh, just take the opportunity, take the chance. Um, I, I hear stories of FFA members all across the country um, that they didn't know if FFA was for them, but they took a chance, took an opportunity, and that's the same story that I have. I didn't really know if it was something that I was interested in, but I took a chance, took an opportunity, and that's led me to where I am now. So uh, my parents always told me when I was growing up, you never want to look back and say, what, what could have been if I would have done something different? So take the opportunities while you have them, right? We can only wear this blue jacket for so long. Eventually, our opportunity to be in FFA is no longer there. So take the opportunity while you have it, that's what I would say. All right, on that note, what is the lasting impact you hope to have on Nebraska FFA is in your time here? Oh gosh, I don't know if I hope to leave any lasting impact, but I, I, I know that being in Nebraska so far, the Midwestern hospitality and just getting to interact with all the members has been really special. So I just hope to have those, those conversations with students uh, at convention, get to know them, get to know their home state, um, and get to have those interesting conversations and dialogues. I think that's where we can really learn from each other um, and grow. So I'm really happy to be here and spend the rest of the week here. Awesome, we know you're busy, so we'll let you go. Thanks, yeah, Carter. Thank you so much. All right, that's Carter. Carter Howell, Southern Region, Southern Region Vice President of the National FFA Organization. There is no shortage of workshops for students at this year's FFA convention, and I am joined by Josh Demiers with the Combine. Josh, you're presenting a workshop this afternoon. Tell yes. us about what you're going to be teaching students. Of course. So we're going to be talking about igniting entrepreneurial success. So really, it's about identifying a pain point that they see in their own lives and crafting that plan around how do I actually go about solving that and presenting to the group of, hey, this is what I came up with. Like, what are the feedback? How do I get started? Awesome. How important is it that high school students are exposed to this concept of entrepreneurship at their age? Yeah, definitely. So I think that on the entrepreneurial mindset really helps them get through the tough moments of every aspect of their life, right? Of, hey, here's this big challenge, this hill in front of me. How do I go through it in an effective manner? Awesome. If there's one concept that you hope these students walk away with a firm grasp of, what would that be? I think from a, from a high-level mindset, it's all about staying simple, right? Just focus on one thing that you're trying to solve and having that one feature or solution that's going to get after it. So I would say keeping it simple. Awesome. Very cool. Once again, that was Joshua Demiers with The Combine talking about the workshop that he will be putting on for FFA members this afternoon here at the Cornhusker Hotel. Nebraska State FFA officer team is a mere couple of days from hanging up their blue jackets for the final time. Earlier this week, Bryce Deuce get caught up with the state officers to get a sneak peek of what their retiring addresses might have. Here on day number two of the Nebraska FFA State Convention, we're joined by a pair of the Nebraska FFA State officers, Keaton Valentine as well as Braden Binger joining us. Keaton, for you, the two of you represent about as far apart in the state of Nebraska as possible, where you uh, <laughs> both grew up and uh, served in your local chapters. Talk about the connections with your fellow state officers over the past year. Yeah, so um, all of us are obviously kind of spread out, um, but also at the same time, it's very unique in the situation that we can be involved in the local chapters in our areas. So whether that's Britain being all the way out in the Western Panhandle or that's me being on the Eastern side, we're able to stay involved in those ways. Do you find more similarities or differences? Definitely a lot more differences. I feel like those are a lot easier to point <laughs> out just with um, uh, what agriculture looks like from one side of the state to the other side of the state is quite different. But also at the same time, it brings up some pretty unique conversations as well. Brayden, I want to bring you into this conversation kind of on the note of uh, those business and industry visits. Sounds like a unique opportunity to perhaps see some areas of the ag industry you might not have known about in the past. Talk about that experience. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of back to your first question about um, just Keaton and I coming from like two opposite ends of the state pretty much. Um, being out in the panhandle in western Nebraska, um, it's kind of a 
different form of the ag industry than from like the eastern half. That's been one of the jokes with members is like, I feel like you can split the state of Nebraska into two different states. Um, and so just being able to see how um, like the wide variety of agriculture across the state has been really cool for me. Uh, like from the west, we have a lot of cattle and wheat um, production. Then coming down east, it's just nothing but corn and soybeans, I feel like. So it's cool to kind of see that variety, especially with business visits and those different um, sponsors and industries that we've gotten to see this year. You're going to have to be careful because then we'll have a discussion about where you're going to put the line. Would it be yeah. uh, the, the central versus mountain time zone line? Is that where you split the state? We won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts uh, on the impact that you and your teammates have had on the Nebraska FFA Association over the past year. Yeah, this this year has been really inspiring, not only for me, but um, for us as a team. And it's just been so influential for us as well as members to just make those connections, interact with students. Chapter visits was a really impactful time for us, I feel like, because we got to go to chapters. Um, throughout the year, all the interactions we have, FFA members usually come to us, but now we got to go to their own chapters. Um, so they were a lot more comfortable and it's just fun to kind of see what they do in their own communities and stuff like that. And just yeah, being able to make those connections and support them and their passions has been a really cool experience. A lot of times when we visit with uh, state officers, now past state officers, they come from uh, some of the programs that have had gener or decades of success having uh, state FFA officers. For you in your chapter, fairly new if I understand it right, what made you want to run for state office? Um, so I never really knew about FFA until I was a freshman when we got um, Hay Springs FFA developed. Um, and once I got involved, it was just the passion for ag that I saw amongst everybody and how big of a deal it was at the state and national level. Um, and just taking those passions into the Blue Jacket through competitions and involvement. Um, I served my chapter as vice president as a freshman, so just being able to kind of set that firm foundation for our chapter in the beginning was really inspiring and just wanted convinced me to get involved at the state level and continue that involvement. Keaton, one of the things we'd like to highlight are the retiring addresses that you yes. and your teammates will give. What's the theme of yours? Uh, so my theme of my retiring address is relationships leading to joy. This past year, uh, I've made so many connections with uh, FFA members, business individuals, whatever those may be. Those connections have really uh, had a big part on my experience this year and they're, they've always been joyful and I just want to really kind of express that at state convention with so many members. We'll look forward to hearing that. Braden, <laughs> similar question to you. How did you craft your retiring address? What was the theme you wanted to incorporate? Yeah, so mine's entitled Something to be Proud of and it really just talks about some of the main values we have um, as FFA members and just um, students in general and talking about um, maybe aside from like winning competitions or the success side of like plaques and ribbons and stuff like that, talks about some of the um, main traits that we show and kind of what we want to focus on at the end of the day, like what's really important to us. So I'm excited to give that on, during convention. Let me wrap up with this question for you, Brayden. How is FFA preparing you for your future career endeavors? It definitely is. Um, that's one of the most beneficial parts of FFA, I feel like, is the wide variety of opportunities and skills that you have the chance to develop. I mean, when it comes to just public speaking, being able, being able to communicate, I feel like communication is a big one. Um, and that goes for FFA members too, all, through all the conferences and opportunities that we have as members, just being able to communicate and meet people, networking, and learning more about the ag industry will develop you for any career path that you take after college. Brayden and Keaton joining us, two of the Nebraska FFA state officers. That'll do it for our pre-show coverage here on day two of the 96th annual Nebraska State FFA convention. Pinnacle Bank Arena is filling up. Let's <laughs> head inside.